Behind every great and successful man, there stands a great woman. Respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to today's episode as we celebrate the birth anniversary of one of the greatest ladies in Islamic history, if not one of the greatest ladies throughout history, and that is no other than Lady Zainab, peace and blessings be upon her. For this reason, I would like to congratulate my dear master, Imam Sahib al-Asri wa Zaman, may Allah hasten his reappearance. To you, my dear viewers, to our pious scholars, and to everyone watching at home for this very auspicious occasion. But coming from a household of knowledge, of wisdom, of generosity, of forbearance, and of modesty, Lady Zainab السلام, was the first daughter to Amir al Mu'mineen, peace and blessings be upon him, the commander of the faithful, to her mother Fatimah al Zahra, peace and blessings be upon her, the first granddaughter to Rasulullah, the greatest being to walk this planet, Prophet Muhammad, to her grandmother Khadija, to Abu Talib, her grandfather, and to her other grandmother. Fatima bint Asad, Zainab alayhi salam, peace and blessings be upon her, was born on the 5th of Jamad al Awwal in the year, in the 6th year after Hijra. Now there are other dates given to her birth, uh, such as the 1st of Sha'ban in the 5th year. However, this is the most credited date for the birth of Lady Zainab alayhi salam. Today I would like to begin by touching upon the first moments of Lady Zainab alayhi salam in this world. When Lady Zainab came to life, Imam Ali Nabi Talib alayhi salam held her in his hands and kissed her on her forehead, of course, after doing the uh, adhan and iqamah in her right ear and left ear respectively. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, we see from the first moment the special connection. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam goes up to his father and he says, Oh, father, he was about three years old at that time, Imam Hussein, peace, out, peace be upon him. He goes up to his father, he says, Oh, father, Allah has granted me a sister and has granted you a daughter. At that moment, Ali ibn Abi Talib began to weep. Now, this is a blessed occasion, it's a happy occasion. When someone gets a child, they either cry out of joy or they are happy. So Imam Hussain alayhi salam, he was surprised. He says, oh father, why are you crying? He says, you will get to know soon, my son. Now, after hearing this, we do see and we find the special bond between Zainab alayhi salam and her brother Imam Hussain and the respect of Imam Hussein towards his sister. As she grew up and, and as she grew older, inshallah we'll get to touch upon more in this episode and tomorrow's episode, we'll find that Zainab alayhi salam was that motivational sister to her brothers, to Imam Hussein, to Imam Hassan, and to Al Abbas and the other brothers. To the point where Zainab set the model for sisters, and it's very important, my dear sisters, to look at this. Because if a person, if, if, if a female lady wants to know how to become a better sister to her brother, how to become a better daughter to her father and mother, then she should and she must study the life of Lady Zainab alayhi salam. And that's one of the key points that we should focus on when we learn about the life of uh, Lady Zainab alayhi salam. And it's unfortunate to see that whenever Zainab, peace be upon her, is brought up, it's always an Ashura, which is great. Yet, the 50 years or so before Ashura, what happened? What did she do? What did she accomplish in her life? And that's, inshallah, we'll get to talk upon, touch upon uh, in these episodes. But if we want to go further on, after everything has been set, Lady Zainab has come to life. Imam Ali, Fatim al Zahra, Al Hassan, and Hussein, all of them gathered around her. They decide to give her a name, but yet they don't want to beat Rasulullah in, in doing so. 
So they go to Rasulullah, he's not in Medina. A couple of days later, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam returns and what does he do? The first door he knocks on is the door of Fatimah al-Zahra. He goes in, he holds the newly born child in his arms. As soon as he held her in his arms, he kissed her and he waited for Jibra'eel. Jibra'eel descended upon him, sending the peace and blessings of Allah upon Prophet Muhammad and telling him to name her Zainab. Now, as soon as Jibra'eel mentioned the name Zainab, he began to cry. Rasulullah was, was shocked. He says, why are you crying, O Jibra'eel? He says, this child of yours, O Prophet of Allah, from early on in her life, this girl will remain entangled in tribulations and trials in this world. First, she will weep over your separation from this world. Then she will lament the separation of her mother, then her father, then her brother Hassan. After all of this, and after facing these calamities, she will go to Karbala, and she will be lonely on these deserts, on the deserts of Karbala. As a result, her back will be crooked, and her hair will turn gray. To that extent, I mean, it's as, as I mentioned, it's a happy occasion, yet we are mentioning something sad. If we looked at the life of Lady Zainab السلام, from a very young age, she had to go through and she had to suffer so much. I mean, from the separation of Prophet Muhammad to her mother, to her father, and then at the end facing Karbala. What a great woman, and it takes courage to do that. I mean, for a lady like Lady Zainab السلام, to face the calamities and stay with such strong will to continue the message that her grandfather brought forward, it's a huge responsibility that Zainab السلام, took. But when the members of the family of Rasulullah heard this, they began to cry. Imam al Hussein السلام, then realized what was going on, then realized why his father earlier cried when he said, Allah has granted me a sister. So we do find from a very young age, we find Zainab السلام, being cried over. But instead, when uh, the companion, the close companion of Rasulullah وسلم, in Ahl Bayt, Salman al-Muhammadi, when he came, to when he heard the news of Zainab السلام, he came to the house of Rasulullah of Imam Ali and Fatimah al-Zahra to congratulate them on the birth. And he saw them crying instead of seeing them happy. He wondered why then they told him the story of what will happen to Zainab. I mean, just imagine, let us take this in and imagine that a newly born child, now we have parties, uh, we have celebrations, because our lives are incomparable to the lives of Ahl Bayt They suffered so much to set an example for us. They had to go through so much suffering for us to learn how to be, not, not to become like them, but be individuals who strive towards them. To strive to possess some of their characteristics. So we as followers of Ahlul Bayt السلام, need to focus on this. On the fact that we should take individuals like Imam al Hussein, like the Ahlul Bayt السلام, as role models on life. But before I conclude the first part of tonight's episode, I would like to touch upon one narration by Prophet Muhammad regarding uh, Lady Zainab السلام. Later on, Fatim al Zahra walked in and she saw Rasulullah holding Lady Zainab in his arm and he is crying again. She goes up to him and she, she says, Oh father, why are you crying now? He says, Jibra'il has told me the one who weeps over Zainab will receive the same reward as crying over her brother Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. And honestly, the greatest reward anyone on this planet can receive 
is the reward of crying over Imam Hussein alayhi salam and what happened on the day of Ashura. But inshallah, we'll get to touch upon uh, more of uh, the life of Lady Zainab alayhi salam, but after this short break, so do stay tuned. Respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, once again, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome once again to our show as we rejoice the birth anniversary of our beloved lady, Lady Zainab. Peace and blessings be upon her. For this reason, once again, I would like to congratulate you, my dear viewers, as well as the master of our time, Imam Al Mahdi, may Allah hasten his reappearance, and our pious scholars. Now before the break, we touched upon some of the prophecies regarding the life of Lady Zainab alayhi salam by Prophet Muhammad and Jibra'il and the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. And honestly, we mentioned that the life of Lady Zainab was not all happiness. It was sadness from day one, as we mentioned. But to continue, I would like to touch upon her name, Zainab. A lot of people tend to name their children something they don't know anything about. For example, a lot of people name their sons David, not knowing who David is. People name their sons Joseph, not knowing who Joseph was, and other names. And unfortunately, we see people naming their children unappropriate names. It's always important, and it's, don't take it from me, take it from the people who are specialists in, in, in psychology. They'll tell you that the name that you give your child will have an impact, an, an impact on them, whether positively or negatively. It will have an impact on them. So it's very important to name our children. And as Imam Sadiq salam, and the Ahlul Bayt tell us, it's very important to choose names from Ahlul Bayt to match our children. And honestly, if you go to look at the names of the people of Ahlul Bayt, from females and males, you'll find a variety of names from the Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam. However, going back to Zainab, Zainab is derived from the Arabic, from the two Arabic words, Zainul Ab, the ornament of the father, or the garment of the father, something that the father is proud of, that decorates the personality, the life of her father. Why was Zainab named as such? It's because whenever she spoke, she had the eloquence of her father, the bravery of her father. She never, she never feared anyone when it came to her religion. She never feared anyone when it came to making the right stand. It's unfortunate to see that some of our dear sisters tend to fall into the traps of shaitan at some moments. But if we do study the life of Lady Zainab, male or female, we must study the life of Zainab alayhi salam. Because in her life, lessons are derived that are applicable in every day. If you look at the aspect of modesty, if you look at the aspect of intelligence, of her perseverance, of her knowledge, you'll find that Zainab alayhi salam fills in the gaps in our lives. 
So when we take Zainab as a role model, we are taking the individuals who will enhance our spirituality at the same time, enhance our abilities to continue serving or to begin to serve our communities. And the people that are serving their communities they are very well recognized. Individuals that have taken the Ahlul Bayt as role models, now they are taken as role models. So it's amazing and it's important at the same time to always look and touch upon the lives of each of the individual Ahlul Bayt. Whether uh, they have a minor asma, minor infallibility, infallibility like Zainab or the major infallibility like the Imams. Of course, study the lives of each of the relatives of Ahlul Bayt from Prophet Muhammad and down. And it's important to also touch upon the Prophet's lives. However, how did Lady Zainab السلام, achieve such a status? Because if we studied her life, if we examined her life, one would realize that Zainab السلام, being an exemplary woman for, 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 for all the ladies across the world, whether Muslim, whether Shia, despite of nationality, race, sect, creed, religion, Zainab السلام, set that line and set that role for everyone. How did she achieve that status of courage, of perseverance, of knowledge, of bravery like her father, and of eloquence like her father? Learning under the five people of Kisa, that's how she received her status. First, she was under the guidance of her grandfather, then her mother, then her father, then her brother, Imam al-Hassan alayhi salam, then her brother, Imam al Hussein, peace and blessings be upon them all. So we do find that this pious nourishment that nurtured Zainab alayhi salam enabled her to bring out that 100% great personality on the day of Ashura and post Ashura. Do we realize the status of Zainab now? For an individual to stand against and in the face of the tyrant of the time, a person who has tens and tens of thousands of army ready, ready to demolish Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam she put her life on the line and she made a statement. She showed women. A lot of people say women are oppressed in Islam. Of course not. I mean, have you studied the life of Zainab? Have you studied the life of Fatim to Zahra? If you have, you would not make such statements. A woman. Now we see ladies, you know, tending to always back away from communities. No, it's important to always try and nourish our communities, whether you're a lady or, or, or a man. Take Zainab as a role model. If you're a man, take an Abbas, take Hussein as a role model. Because Zainab made the ultimate stand like Imam al Hussein. Because if it wasn't for Zainab, Imam al Hussein would have stayed in Karbala and had, would, had never reached anywhere around the borders of Karbala. Because who was the messenger of Imam al Hussein? Just like how Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of Allah and he conveys his message to the people, Zainab alayhi salam, of course, it's an example, and I'm not you know, comparing the status, but Zainab alayhi salam was the messenger to the message of Imam al Hussein. Peace and blessings be upon him. Because if it wasn't for Zainab, Imam al Hussein would have stayed in Karbala and Zainab would have either died or somewhere else. But Zainab made that stand to defend Islam the same way her brother, her other brother, Imam Hassan, and her mother and her father and her grandfather. So it takes courage to establish something like Zainab. It takes courage for us to say when someone asks us, who are your role models? Just think for a moment to yourself, who are our role models? Are we really going to choose the Ahlul Bayt? Are, are, are we going to choose an athlete, a soccer player, uh, an actor in a movie, an actress? And unfortunately, some people say singers and rappers. 
Yet we have forgotten about the Ahlul Bayt and what they have done for us. So the minimum we can do is take them as our role models and never forget about them. To always keep them in our mind. But if we want to touch upon some of the knowledge, you know, a lot of people when they say knowledge, they tend to always mix it up with sciences and stuff. But knowledge with the Ahl Bayt السلام, comes as, as a full package. And Zainab السلام, got a piece of that full knowledge. That's why Zainab السلام, tells his aunt, Oh, Amma, Anti Alama, Ghair Mu'allama, Oh, aunt, you are a scholar without anyone teaching you. How can someone be like that without being taught? Inshallah, we'll get to touch upon that in tomorrow's episode. But right now, I would like to touch upon. Something that occurred in the early stages of, uh, of Lady Zainab السلام, at the age of five, Zainab woke up crying. Her grandfather Rasulullah heard her, so he was trying to calm her down, asking her what was going on. She says that a violent wind, uh, wind arose in the city and darkened the earth and the sky. The little girl was tossed here and there, and suddenly she found herself stuck in a branch of a huge tree. But the wind was so strong that it uprooted that tree and broke the branch. Then, as she was panicking, she grabbed two twigs. But these two twigs gave way and she was falling with no support. Then she woke up and told her grandfather. Now, what did her grandfather say? Look how he addresses her. He says, O oh daughter, O oh my beloved daughter, that tree is me, who is shortly going to leave this world. The branches are your father, Ali ibn Abi Talib, and your mother, Fatima al Zahra. And the two twigs are your brothers. Imam al Hassan and Imam al Hussein, they will all depart before you do. And you will suffer and you will go through trials and calamities like no other lady in Ahl Bayt. Do we understand how Zainab is growing up now? Some people right now would call this a nightmare and would just forget about it. But when someone that possesses a minor infallibility like Zainab, when they see a dream, this dream must mean something. And at a, fi a five-year-old girl, getting, you know, everyone knows whether you're five, whether you're 10, you always know that, you know, your parents will die someday and, you know, the, the, the ones you love will not always be there. But not for a child. Waking up at night crying because of a dream. And yet she realizes that this dream meant that all of the people she loves will leave her. Can we imagine the life and the stress that Zainab السلام, had to go through? But I would like to leave it off here for tonight. I would like to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability to, to take Zainab السلام, as a role model. And of course, it is a joyful occasion. And the facts that we have mentioned are uh, somewhat grief, uh, sorrow filled, if you will. Uh, but inshallah, may Lady Zainab السلام, give us the ability to rejoice in her name with the master of our time. May Allah hasten his reappearance. May he reappear shortly for we have and the earth has been filled with injustice and uh, inequality. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the patience and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once again uh, congratulate you on this auspicious occasion. Thank you very much for tuning in. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.